Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Aurora RC Z4 Freestyle. This is a bind and fly 5 inch freestyle model but it's a strange one because first of all I'd say that this is a racing frame and not a freestyle frame. Now I know many people would argue that you can do freestyle with a race copter frame and that is true but in my opinion they are two different types of models and frames. So the advantage of a race copter frame is that they are light which means they can be very fast and this one is pretty light at 315 grams without a battery. Now there are lighter setups than that but ever since we started going to these larger stator motors it's harder to get below 300 grams but the disadvantage is to get that weight down you have to bottom mount the battery and and in my experience, bottom mounting the battery causes the center of gravity of the copter to be lower. And it also means that you are landing on one of the most, shall we say, explosive and expensive parts of the model. I've also noticed that I tend to get a lot more prop wash oscillations with a bottom mount battery compared to a top mounted battery. Now I accept some of that is to do with throttle management and at first I thought it was because race copters are lighter making them more affected by the turbulent air when they are descending quickly and I still think that has got something to do with it but I also think that the lower center of gravity on a bottom mounted battery has part to play with it too because with top mounted batteries prop wash oscillations are almost non-existent no matter how I manage the throttle and then if we are to add a GoPro to the top of a bottom mounted model we've got quite an imbalance in weight so it will be interesting to see how this Z4 freestyle deals with prop wash oscillations because I've been flying a lot of freestyle models lately which has allowed me to be very lazy with my throttle management. So for me this is what a freestyle copter is all about. This is the Sky Stars Star Lord and it's my current favorite freestyle copter along with the Emax Buzz and my Impulse Alien which is currently in bits. But there are some compromises to achieve the desired results with a freestyle model which is to get ultra smooth video using a HD camera like a GoPro and then if you use SuperView to get that extra wide angle then we need to get the props out of shot and as you can see in order to achieve that we've got a long top plate which puts the FPV camera and the GoPro further forward so that we don't get the props in shot which you have to do if you want to use super view now there is an exception to that some people use a race copter and have a super high angle on their camera so that they can do matty stunts style tricks and I acknowledge that but I still think a top mount battery will give you a better balance even doing those kinds of tricks you can see on the Sky Stars the top plate is elongated at the back for the lipo to fit and top mounting the battery isn't just done so that we don't land on it I mean they could have easily done away with this back part to make the model lighter and still bottom mount the battery but top mounting the battery gives the model a better overall balance with the weight of the GoPro and the LiPo being on the same level rather than giving the flight controller a pendulum effect to deal with having the camera's weight at the top of the model and then the battery's weight at the bottom. A top mount also means that we can get super low to the ground and even skim it in some cases which is why the Sky Stars has this TPU underneath the frame so that we can do just that. 
but all of these changes make the model heavier. In fact, the Sky Stars is almost 400 grams, so that's nearly 100 grams heavier than the Z4 Freestyle. And in the past, I've been guilty of this. I would look at those figures and say, that's too heavy, it's going to be too slow, and flight times are going to be really short. Which is why I think Freestyle and Race Copters need to be separated as a class, because weight is a good thing if you're trying to get smooth video. A heavy model will cut through the air smoother than a lighter model in the same way that a Boeing 747 is a smoother ride than, say, a Piper Archer. And it's better balance and added weight overpowers the turbulent air that causes prop wash oscillations in huge dives. So if I'm going to an epic location, I know which type of frame that I'm going to be taking with me. It's going to be the Sky Stars because it's going to give me the smoothest footage. As for the flight time thing, they're about the same really, unless you run a really low pitched prop on your race copter, but then it's not a race copter. And that's why I love the Sky Star so much, because on an 1800 milliamp battery, I can get a six minute flight time out of it, and that is thrashing it as well. And that's because it's on low pitched props. But if you give me a race copter with high pitched props on it, then I'll get a two minute flight time because I just can't can't help myself. And in general, the 5 inch platform isn't very efficient anyways, so even if you run high pitched 5 inch props or low pitch 5 inch props, your flight times aren't going to be more than 6 or 7 minutes anyways, unless you go dual blade, which is why people are now going 6, 7 and 8 inch for endurance. Now, while I'm saying all of this, there's going to be a percentage of people who are absolutely seething with rage at what I'm saying, because despite everything I just said, you can use a race copter to do freestyle. I mean, the word itself, free, means that you can do anything that you like. So don't worry, because from this point on, I'm going to show you how the Z4 can be a freestyle copter. Now, I've got this one from Gearbest, and I've got a coupon which makes it cheaper than everywhere else, so they tell me, so I'll link that in the description. However, this model is available in other stores, and I've told Gearbest that they need to improve their service, and they've told me that if you buy this model now, it will ship within seven days. So the frame is a unibody, and the quality of the carbon fibre is top-notch. The screws underneath fit flush, so they aren't going to dig into your LiPo. However, you aren't provided any anti-slip material so I've added these bits of silicon because the lipo strap that they have provided is really sub par for the price and the way that it fits through the frame through these tiny slots makes it really difficult to swap out for a better battery strap so I'm going to be sticking with it. The stack sits really low as well and the motors are soldered from the underneath so you couldn't just put a bigger battery strap through there because there's no room. But the fact that they are calling this a freestyle model is not the only unusual thing about this copter because its components are a mix of budget parts but then really top spec parts. So we've got the DYS Samguk 2306-2500kV budget motors. Now don't get me wrong, these are super motors and I use them in my 100GBP freestyle build and they are still going strong. I think when they first came out they had issues with the bearings wearing out quickly but they must have sorted that because mine run sweet as a button and they have a hollow shaft and a naked bottom. The only thing I wish they had was a hex screw underneath rather than a C-clip but other than that you wouldn't know that they were a budget motor. They are really smooth and they fly really well. The props that they have provided are the Gemfan 5043 Wind Dancers, which are a freestyle prop, so they haven't misunderstood what freestyle means. But then when we get to the main guts, this is where it starts to get really interesting. The ESCs aren't 32-bit, but they have an impressive amount of filtering built into them, which is probably why we don't have a low ESR capacitor on the terminals, because if there's enough filtering 
on the ESCs themselves, then external filtering isn't needed. They are rated to 35 amp and they have a current meter. But the flight controller is what I'm most excited about because it looks like the Airbot F4, which is up there with being one of my favorite flight controllers. Its giveaway are these flat flexible cable connectors, which are for adding external devices like an external IMU and it's the same flight controller found on the Hobbymate Comet and Meteor and those both flew superb. The other telltale sign that it's the Airbot is that it's got an onboard 8 volt regulator which is noise free so I'm really hoping that this isn't just a copy because usually Aurora RC have their own stacks but this looks legit in fact I like this FC so much that I plan to make a 6S freestyle copter and this is going to be the flight controller that I use it comes with Betaflight on screen display which is a given these days and it's got more UI than you could ever need. It's come flash with Betaflight version 3.57 but the setup is not the best to put it politely. Everything is pretty much stock including the PIDs so apart from the craft personalization and a few modes set up you're going to need to be accustomed to Betaflight with this one although the receiver was set up correctly for SBUS. The flight controller is soft mounted and it has a physical buzzer connected to it which is quite rare these days and it sits neatly underneath the camera and is nice and loud. We've got some programmable LEDs on the back which are so bright but they aren't programmed so if you are into that sort of thing then you'll have to program it yourself. But the flight controller is not the only premium component on this model because above that we've got the Rush Tank VTX and I've heard a lot about this VTX and some people say that it's better than the Unify. Now I don't find that hard to believe because I've got more dead Unifies than working ones and I'm not much of a fan of it and apparently it's been TBS approved which if true can't have been easy if the talk of their business model is true. But if you want to find more information on the VTX then I will link to it in the description so you can read about all of the things that it can do because according to the manual it's got some unique tech in there. But it's more in keeping with a freestyle VTX in that it switches via TBS Smart Audio with a power up to 800 milliwatt. Although my Immersion RC power meter showed its max output at around 460 milliwatts which is still respectable and I think it's about what the Unify shows on those meters anyways. And you can't see it but it uses an MMCX connector which I'm a big fan of and it's actually waterproof. It does have buttons on the side to change the settings but I'd ignore those and use the smart audio. The only button I'm interested in is this back one because if you press it when powering up the model it puts it into pit mode. The antenna is a right hand polarized SMA stubby antenna and personally I think I'd replace this because when the copter is in forward motion then it's going to be pointing in the wrong direction and when I put a GoPro up the front then it's going to block the signal so I'll probably use a longer one that's semi rigid so that I can bend it backwards so it's more in line when in forward flight. So. This is the Bind and Flight version and it comes with an XM Plus flashed with the international version of the firmware without the RSSI on an AUX channel. You can also get it as a plug and fly or with a FlySky 2A receiver. And I have to say I do like how they have dealt with the receiver. It's on a plug and they provide a spare conjoining plug so swapping or installing a different receiver will be really easy. Although I don't think they thought through the placement of the receiver very well because it was stuck onto the heatsink of the VTX via some double sided foam and the minute I plugged a LiPo into the copter with the antenna on of course the heat from the VTX instantly made it come loose so I've moved it to the top of the copter using some cable ties around it which also makes the bind button more accessible.
The antennas are also loose out of the box, but there are two very tiny holes in this carbon plate that are just big enough to feed the antennas through. So I did that and then added some heat shrink to secure them in place. Then lastly, up front, we've got the Cadex SDR2 Plus, which is a CMOS camera with the turbo eye lens. I think that's the lens that initially came with the turtle camera and it comes set up in 16x9 mode. However, just like the Retal 2.1 lens version, it must have a 4x3 sensor because when I switched it to 4x3, because I use 4x3 goggles, I got more field of view out of it. So look out for that if you are using 16x9 goggles. I would still use the 4x3 option because you'll get a bigger field of view. Luckily, they have provided the controller board and it's got an extension wire attached to the camera, so it's easily accessible. There isn't any camera protection, and I know that's a trigger for some people, so I'll mention it, but it's not a deal breaker for me because I've mentioned this in a lot of my videos, but it's usually the motors or the props that get hit first. And even with the best camera protection in the world, you are not immune to getting your camera smashed. Take it from me. Also in the box, you're given a spare set of props and a bunch of spare screws and nuts, which I always like to see. And we have a smaller strap, which I guess is for your GoPro, but I'm not going to be using it because it's really flimsy and is the same style as the strap underneath. You're given this really neat prop nut tool. It's got two sides to it. One is for loosening the nut and the other is for tightening it. I'm not sure the two-sided thing is actually that useful because you have to sort of mess around and I don't really see the point of it, but it is better than nothing. You still have to hold the motors so you can still end up cutting up your hands when trying to tighten the nut or loosen the nut. And I think this tool is about 11 quid on its own, so it's not bad that it's included in this package. The recess, though, isn't quite deep enough to cover the whole of the nut, so it does sometimes slip, but it is good enough and it does just about do the job. You're also given a manual, which is pretty nice. It tells you what UARTs to use for each receiver type, along with how the model is wired up. There's even the VTX and camera manual, but there isn't any extra beta flight settings. So, as I said earlier, you need to be accustomed to beta flight. I'm sure you could get it flying, but you could get more out of it if you learnt beta flight properly. The package doesn't come with a LiPo, but you're going to want to be using a 4S with this one, and I wouldn't use any less than a 1500 milliamp LiPo. Even with these less demanding freestyle props, a 1300 milliamp 4S isn't going to be able to provide enough current with these 23 stator motors. In fact, in an attempt to make this copter heavier, I'm going to be using the new Tattoo V3 1800 milliamp 4S. But what do we do about the HD camera? Well, freestyle doesn't have to mean that you run a HD camera. As I said earlier, the word free means that you can do anything you like. However, Beta Flight 357 stock PIDs, in my experience, are set up in favor of a heavier 5 inch copter running a GoPro. Now, I know. Beta Flight 4 is a different animal and I'm not going to go there yet. And all of that talk earlier about prop wash could be all mute after flashing Beta Flight 4 to it. But I like to review these models as they come. So with Beta Flight 357, if I go light with this model, then I'm going to have to start playing with the PIDs. So I'm going to mount a Session 5 to the top of the model housed in this iFlight TPU mount. And then I'm going to use an Emac strap to make sure that it's not going to fall off and I've turned super view off so with some luck we shouldn't get the props in shot but we still should get some decent footage from it. Okay let's go for a line of sight with this guy starting off in angle mode now I'm not going to do a speed test with this one because first of all it's meant to be a freestyle copter despite it actually being on a race frame 
but I've also done a very similar speed test with these motors. I think it was the Waytech Red Hair and it got between 95 mile per hour and about 98 mile per hour if I remember correctly but I'll do a punch out so we can see what the power is like <laughs> the power is crazy this is a race copter not a freestyle copter really but I've got the GoPro on there and I've even stuck an 1800 milliamp 4S LiPo on there to get the weight up and even with that it's still under 600 grams so your usual freestyle model is usually above 600 grams in fact I think my Alien's about 670 grams this one 597 By the way, those top speeds on the Waytech Red Hair were done on the Gemfan 51, 52 props. So these are a lower pitch prop, but man, this really has got the punch, even with a GoPro on it. Just instant acceleration. I really like these motors and I love this flight controller. These are just the stock pids, I'm not hearing any oscillations. It feels smooth as. So let's see how noisy it is. It's not too bad. Middle of the range, I would say. but it's flying nicely, line of sight. So the next test is to see how it flies FPV. Just look at those LEDs. I don't know if they're gonna come through on the camera, but they're coming through nicely in person. But let's bring it in. Okay, let's take a look at some flight footage and I'm starting off with the GoPro because we've got a nice sunny day and despite me not using Superview I think the picture is beautiful and just as I suspected this model is flying superb just stock pids just have to make sure that you get the weight right and it flies perfect and it does go to show that Actually, with these GoPros, you don't necessarily need super view to get a super view, if you know what I mean. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, and it was such a joy to fly. Really incredibly smooth and impressive footage, and I'm doing these infinity rolls here, but... I guess I'm gonna have to show you some of the DVR footage but just as I suspected it's squeaky clean with that 8 volt regulator the only thing I noticed is with the camera we've got a slight line at the top I'm not sure what that is but I checked with other goggles and it's always there doesn't really bother me the picture is nice and clean and the dynamic range is fantastic so nothing to complain about there but just look at these shots here ah oh, do you know what I'm starting to think I actually prefer this than Superview yeah Superview is a really wide field of view but you do get that distortion towards the edges there I mean you've still got a slight curvature here but you know it's still a decent field of view and with it being a sunny day as well we're getting nice dynamic range and this thing is just a joy to fly so back to the DVR footage there and I was mentioning earlier you can't quite get as low as with a top mount but you can still get pretty low I got a little bit of 
oscillation there did you see a little bit of prop wash oscillation and I think that is just me you know not being on the throttle at the right time however I did do a flight later this day and the Sun had gone down and it was actually at the football pitch that I fly at so I was flying through goalposts and things and I noticed a lot more prop wash oscillations there but this is just testing a little bit of range and you can see not getting break up really until I turn around where I'm blocking the signal plenty of power but just check out that voltage there it's getting pretty low but I'm kind of nursing it now so just taking a look around really like the colors of this camera really nice and rich and it does look a little bit foggy but it was a, a misty day despite it being sunny so yeah visibility there not going for miles but still a nice sunny day I'm just really enjoying flying this model. Absolutely love this flight controller. I cannot recommend it enough. You know, it's got the tabs on there to have an external IMU, but it's not needed at all. It flies superb. Not getting any JALO through the GoPro and not getting any JALO through the FPV camera as well. I was quite surprised by that actually because you know the GoPro is just mounted on the carbon and that is connected directly to the unibody frame but nope fine and look at that just how snappy and no bounce back from those hesitation maneuvers so this thing is tuned absolutely perfectly and maybe if I installed Betaflight 4, then I could get rid of those prop wash oscillations, but, you know, they're not bad whatsoever. And as I say, I've been flying full freestyle setups, so I'm a little bit lazy on the throttle, I've noticed. I've noticed when flying the bottom mount 3 inch as well, prop wash oscillations. It is partly down to me but if we take a look at the flight time we are over five minutes the current meter is slightly out because this is an 1800 milliamp but that can be sorted you can look up online how to calibrate the current meter you do need to have a charger that records how many milliamps are being put back into the battery after you have had a flight but I'm gonna leave you with some clips here of me flying in a bigger open space it is around about half past eight so it's darker but it does seem to be that if you don't use super view that you can use a race copter to do freestyle and it was very enjoyable and overall it's a nice model so I will leave a link in the description if you wish to get one as well as a coupon code I hope that works for you and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers